1976 Topps Rogers Hornsby, a cardboard history lesson. These days, collectors have come to expect the unexpected when it comes to the mixing of errors in their not wax packs. I mean, one day, you might find a 1985 Donruss card, or facsimile thereof, of Sandy Koufax, and the next you might uncover Juan Soto doing his best Mario Soto rookie card impression, blasting out of a 1978 Topps design. And when you add in all the cards that never were, that you can find online, and the art cards, and the super limited edition cards, well, it's sometimes hard to know what's real and what's not. That must have been the sort of feeling that welled up in kids when they were shuffling through their fresh-out-of-the-pack 1976 Topps cards in that now long-ago bicentennial summer, too. There you were, marveling at that gritty Johnny Bench card, or foaming at the mouth thinking about the gaudy future that lay ahead of the 1976 rookie pitchers like Don Ossie, or shoving that American League home run leaders card in your friend's face, told you George Scott was going to be the next Reggie Jackson. There you were, doing all that when, boom, an ancient and probably priceless black and white relic from baseball's prehistoric days slapped you across the face. A relic card like number 342 featuring Rogers Hornsby. Was the card real? A joke? Some sort of ruse to swindle collectors somehow? And just who was Rogers Hornsby anyway? When you flipped the card over, you got at least some hint of the answers you sought. The card back had the 1976 Topps color scheme, the Topps chewing gum copyright line, and a real card number, the aforementioned number 342. It seemed real, but what were the sporty news all-time all-stars? Neither the card back nor the red, white, and blue font gave any real indication of that, other than to lay out Hornsby's full statistical claim to the honor the way only Topps could. 358 lifetime average, 2,930 hits, 541 doubles, 7 batting titles, including 3 times over 400, plus election to the Hall of Fame in 1942. So even if you didn't know anything about Hornsby before stumbling across that card, it was easy to see why he might be considered an all-time all-star. Of course, these days, it's easy enough to look up the full checklist, and maybe you were lucky enough to pull one from Wax Packs back then and see the full lineup. First base, Lou Gehrig, number 341. Second base, Rogers Hornsby, number 342. Third base, Pie Trainer, number 343. Shortstop, Hannes Wagner, number 344. Right field, Babe Ruth, number 345. Center field, Ty Cobb, number 346. Left field, Ted Williams, number 347. Catcher, Mickey Cochran, number 348. Right-handed pitcher, Walter Johnson, number 349. Left-handed pitcher, Lefty Glove, number 350. Even if Hornsby was an unknown to you, chances are you knew something about Gehrig and Ruth and Cobb and Williams and maybe some others. So yes, this really did look like an all-time all-star team, huh? And though we'd probably make some pretty different choices if we were picking our top 10 today, this team would still make a pretty good showing against whoever we could throw out there. Manning the Keystone would be good old Rogers, whose 1976 Topps card checks in around $15 in PSA 8 these days, jumping up to $60 range in PSA 9, and more than $300 in a perfect 10. Not too bad for a card that wasn't even real, huh?